Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to code out a polynomial regression model from scratch within Python. Before we get started, let's take a look at the packages we'll use. These include NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Great, let's get started. Before we can get into the actual polynomial regression modeling, we need to take a look at the difference between linearity and nonlinearity. Let's start by defining a linear function, which is a function whose graph lies on a straight line and which can be described by giving the slope and y-intercept of that line. For our example, we have the following linear function, y is equal to 2x plus 4, y will be our output, and x will be the input. Let's also describe what a polynomial is, which is a mathematical expression involving a sum of powers in one or more variables multiplied by coefficients. In the case of this simple function, the coefficient is x, which we multiply by 2, and we sum by 4 to get the output. We can also have polynomials of different degrees. This degree is to the first, but we can have the degree to the second, which is x squared, or the degree to the third, which is x cubed. But if we did take have an x squared or an x cubed in this function, that would make it nonlinear, which we'll describe later in the notebook. Let's at this point code out this linear function. And I'll code this out as a function in Python, and I'll just call this linear func. And it will take one input, which is x. And we're just going to return the y, which is 2 multiplied by x plus 4. Great. Let's graph this out. And we can see that this function is just a straight line, which means the definition of a linear function. As we increment x by 1, we get an increase of y by 2. And this continues to be constant over time, which makes this a linear function. We can confirm this by taking a look at the slope. And we'll print this out in a pandas data frame where we have y sub i minus y sub i minus 1 in the numerator. And in the case when x is equal to 1, y sub i will be 6. We need to subtract by the previous y value, which is 4. In the de denominator, we have x sub i, which is equal to 1, subtracted by x sub i minus 1, which is the previous value, and we'll get 2 as our end product for this slope. And we can see that as we continue to increment by 1, the slope is going to be constant. Now that we have an idea of a linear function, let's define what a nonlinear function is, which is a polynomial that contains a degree higher than 1, which could be x squared, x to the third, x to the fourth, so on and so forth. A nonlinear function's output is not a straight line. And what we'll do is, in our example throughout this video, is we're going to be for, to be modeling a Bitcoin process, where we are going to take a look at the cost of mining a Bitcoin based on the number of hours spent mining. And we're going to, this is the actual process here. This isn't the regression yet, which we'll get later into. But the process of the cost is 2 multiplied by the number of mining hours squared plus 25 multiplied by the number of mining hours plus an error term. And this number of mining hours squared is what makes this nonlinear because we have a polynomial of degree 2. And we also have this error term which is going to be random noise that will slightly increase or decrease the cost of mining a Bitcoin for our observations. And we're going to code this out right here, 2x squared plus 25x plus the error. And I'll call this NL func for nonlinear function. Similar to our linear function, it just takes one input x 
and we'll have this returned. Just to explain this error term, it will come from a normal distribution and we'll expect on average that the error will be zero, but there is some variability in the error. So we will see jumps in this error term based on that variability. Great. Now let's move on and we'll create our X values, which is the number of hours spent mining. And we'll go from zero hours up to and not including 25. So zero to 24 hours in all. That will be our input. Next, we'll set a random seed just in case anybody following along with the video wants to recreate these numbers and make sure that they can code this out correctly. And finally, we'll create our sample of observations for the cost of mining Bitcoin. And what we'll do is we'll use list comprehension where we're going to run this function for each of those values ranging from zero to 24. So we'll plug this in zero, calculate it up to 24 hours. And finally, just to go over this more in depth, I'll also print this out and we can review the X and Y values in this process. Okay. Here on the left-hand side, we have the number of hours mining and the cost or power consumption of for mining for that Bitcoin. At zero hours of mining, we basically have no cost, 0 0.02 cents. We continue to increment this for three hours of mining for Bitcoin. The cost is $92.81. And if we jump all the way down to 24 hours for mining for Bitcoin, the cost is $1,759.75. And we can also visualize this too by using matplotlib. And we can see here that this isn't a linear function in that it's not a straight line or it doesn't really approximate a straight line. And we could just confirm this visually for now. We can also calculate the slope to confirm this, but it won't be necessary since we can easily identify that this is a nonlinear process. And we'll also get a better idea of this once we model this process with a simple linear regression. And we'll compare that simple linear regression model to the polynomial regression. And let's move on to modeling the simple linear regression. And I have a previous video I made on simple linear regression that goes in depth into the topic. It also talks about the assumptions that are made for linear models, and those assumptions are also applicable to the polynomial regression. So if you're new to statistics or machine learning, I recommend checking it out, and the link is in the description. Anyway, let's move on, and a simple linear regression models the relationship between the independent variable, which in our example is the hours of mining for Bitcoin, and the dependent variable, which is the cost of mining Bitcoin. And what we'll do is we have these Y values, which is the predicted cost, and that's equal to beta sub zero, which is the intercept, plus beta sub one, the coefficient or the slope multiplied by the X's or the number of mining hours, plus some random error that we know is in the process. We can also model this using linear algebra, and that's what we'll do with both the simple linear regression and polynomial regression. And I'll talk about the actual computation of this with when, once we get down to the polynomial regression and what these symbols mean and what we're, the operations we're actually conducting here. But moving on, let's run this. And let's take a look at the simple linear regression and how well it does. This red line is the predicted values for the cost of mining Bitcoin given an hour, given the hours of mining, and the blue dots are the actual observed values. 
And we can see that the difference or the error between the actual values and the predicted values is pretty large across all of the samples, observed samples. So we wouldn't want to use this model. And we can also think about these predictions logically. We can take a look at the first hour's predicted cost. And we get a negative $191.25. And if we just think about what the model is telling us is if we don't mine for Bitcoin, the power company is going to pay us $191.25 which is highly unlikely. And we can see that as we continue for the first few hours, we still have that negative value, which really wouldn't make sense because we're consuming power. So we know that we'll be charged some sort of cost for mining for Bitcoin. And right away that should tell us that, okay, this isn't the best model to use for this process. And this is when we can use the polynomial regression. And you'll end up using this polynomial regression when the data is nonlinear. And the model for the Bitcoin cost prediction, you can actually see that it's relatively similar to the simple linear regression where we have the intercept beta sub zero and we're adding the beta sub one multiplied by the number of mining hours. And then we have a second coefficient, beta sub 2. And what we're going to multiply this beta sub 2 is by x squared. And what we're doing is we're transforming the x values and we're squaring it in this part of the model. And this would make our polynomial regression of degree 2, which would make this a quadratic regression. We're still only using one independent variable, which is the hours of mining but we're going to take the hours of mining and we're going to have that multiplied by beta sub one. And we're going to have an additional set of hours where we square those hours and multiply them by a second coefficient. And even though the polynomial regression is used to model nonlinear processes, the technique is still a linear model because it is linear in the regression coefficients, beta sub one and beta sub two. We're not squaring the beta sub one and beta sub two coefficients. We're just squaring the observed values. And this is a neat property of the model and it's still technically linear. Great, let's get into building out our model and we'll do this using linear algebra and matrix form. and. I go in depth in my previous video on simple linear regression in this as well, if you want to check that out. But the only difference will be this x squared value. So let's take a look at this just to understand it. The first thing that we need to do is perform this operation where we're, this operation is going to be x and we're taking the dot product of x transpose. Then we're going to invert this the product and get an inverted matrix and then we'll take the dot product of the inverted matrix and x dot x transpose dot product y let's break this down and for our y values we have this array here from of all of our observed values for cost so this is the cost for the zero hours of mining up to the final cost, which is 24 hours of mining. For the X values, we have these three rows here. Our first row is just a row of one values, and we need this in order to calculate the intercept for our model. Next, we have the number of hours spent mining, and this ranges from zero hours up to 24 hours. The final row is the number of hours squared. In this case, we have 23. We take the square, we square 23 and we get 529. We also need to get the transpose of the matrix. In this case, we have three rows by 24 columns. When we take the transpose, we get 24 rows by three columns. The next operation we need to do is the dot product. 
And the way that we do this is we are going to take x and the dot product of x transpose. And the way that we do this is for this call for this row of ones, we're going to take each of these ones and then multiply by the ones in this first column. And then we sum over it to get 25. We keep doing that for each of the columns here. We take the ones, multiply it by each of the values in this column, sum over, same thing for this one. And we keep doing this for each of the rows as well until we get this matrix here. And you'll notice that our matrix gets compressed because we have a three row, three row matrix here and a three column matrix here. The dot product of this turns into a three by three square matrix. And then we have this next operation here, which is taking and inverting the the dot the dot product of these x values here. And I have the operation of how this inverse, taking the inverse of the matrix on the right hand side here. For the second part of the operation, we need to take each of the y values and we need to take the dot product of that against the x transpose and we get this one row by three column matrix. And finally, to get our beta coefficients is we take this inverted matrix and we take the dot product of this matrix here and we get our estimates of the beta coefficient. In this case, we have our intercept, which is negative 12, approximately negative 12, our beta sub one coefficient, which is 27, and our beta sub two co coefficient, which will multiply by the x squared, which is 1.94. And then finally, we're going to get our predicted values. And the way that we do this is for each of, for each of the x values, we're going to first multiply the x values by beta sub one, take the squared x values, multiply them by beta sub two, then we're going to sum all over these and we're going to add the intercept as well to get our final prediction for the cost of mining for Bitcoin. And let's code this out as well. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'll explain what's going on here. And the first thing that we'll do is we need to fit the model which is this first part here. And we want to make sure that we have a NumPy array because all of these matrix calculations need to be done on with it using the NumPy package. And in case a regular list gets passed in here, this converts it to a NumPy array. We're going to concatenate or add the ones into our matrix and reshape it. Then we're going to take the transpose the dot product of the x's, invert the x's, and then separately, we're going to take the inverted, the dot product of the y values and the x transpose, and we will get our intercept beta calculation. So let's run this and let's check that our values match up here. And we have the beta coefficients here, so negative 12 lines up with what we have in our LaTeX writing, 27 and 1.94. Great. And then finally, once we have the model fitted, we need to predict it. And the way that we predict it is we're going to pass in the X values, then the coefficients. And what we'll do is we're going to, like I stated before, take the dot product of the beta sub one and X, add that to the dot product of beta sub two, we need to square the X's in this one. And finally, we're going to add the intercept in order to get our polynomial regression predictions. And what we can do is we can graph this out. 
And we could see that our polynomial regression did a much better job in predicting the values for this process. And we can see that the errors are pretty small when compared to the linear regression when we look at this graphically. And the, the model, which is this green line, is pretty close to the observed values within the data set. And another way that we can compare this is by looking at the mean squared error. And I have another video on this just going more in depth to it. But like I stated before, the mean squared error is the difference between the actual value and the predicted value by the model. And we're just simply going to square that error. And what we want to see is we want to see a lower mean squared error, which should show that our model does a relatively good job in explaining the data. There are some issues with overfitting, but we won't get into that in this video. Just something to keep in mind. We have our mean squared error function, and let's compare the mean squared error of the linear regression to the polynomial regression. Again, a smaller value is better, and we can see that the linear regression has a pretty large mean squared error relative to the polynomial regression meaning the linear regression did a far worse job relative to the polynomial regression. Thank you for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. There are a few different articles that you can check out and that I used to put together this video. Anything from Wolfram, MathWorld is really good to understand. Penn State's website also does a pretty good job in explaining polynomial regression. And there are even more videos out there that you can check out by other YouTubers that do a great job in explaining polynomial regression. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. I have other videos similar to this. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and happy coding.